What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create a full color illustration from rough sketch to the final piece. Just a little heads up, throughout this video I may refer to other videos they may help you create illustrations just like mine. But when the time comes to mention those videos, I'll leave a link in the card and every video that you'll ever need to create illustrations just like mine. Everything will be in the description but I'll also link some in the card as well. And now, let's get to the video. Step one would be my planning phase. This is where I take uh, all the ideas that I want to incorporate, get out my sketchbook, and uh, just plan out everything I want in the illustration. So I'll pretty much make like a little thumbnail about the entire illustration so that way I know where to place everything and how to draw a few things. So I just make like a little thumbnail there and then throughout that page of my sketchbook I like to kind of uh, sketch out a few things see if I know how to draw this or see if I need practice drawing it before actually making the illustration because some people making illustrations they may want to learn how to draw like maybe a car because I know a lot of people struggle with drawing vehicles and the same thing with animals so they want to make sure they know how to draw it before actually going to make the illustration. It's also a good idea because when you're drawing in a sketchbook, you don't have to necessarily be perfect when you're drawing in it. Also, since my illustrations have characters in it, I want to actually get a feel of what the characters will actually look like in a final illustration. How I see it in my head, then I just want to put it down on paper. And then also in my sketchbook, this may not be necessary to a lot of people, but I also like to incorporate some colors. You can use like colored pencil since that's more of a dry media and it works better in a sketchbook. You can also use like uh, markers, but since this sketchbook I'm using is more of a mixed media sketchbook, I can apply markers to it and like plan out some color schemes that I may want to use or maybe some like colors here and there. And you can also place colors somewhere in your thumbnail as well so you know where to place your colors and what to color things. And also when you're in that sketchbook, you can also change up a few colors that you want. Like you may not be satisfied with this color. So you want to use something different. But yeah, if you are planning an illustration in a sketchbook, this is what my spread usually looks like. Usually a thumbnail and then a few other sketches of things that I may have trouble drawing in the final drawing. Because if you try to draw that in the final drawing, you'll end up messing it up and then using another piece of paper to make your illustration. But the pencils I use for sketching are usually a HB or 2H or anything lighter. But I normally just use a HB because it has a fairly dark lead. It's somewhat easy, somewhat hard to erase depending on what brand you get and what paper you're using on. And I also tend to use a 2H because it kind of has a light lead and it's easy to erase if you're trying to make your sketchbook look perfect. But but like I said, there's no perfection needed for a sketchbook because you're only planning it. You're not really going for the best results possible because that's what the actual illustration is for. Okay, once you hit step two, you're actually beginning the illustration. So this is where you take all the elements in your planning sketch and you put it all in one illustration. But if you are afraid to sketch your illustration on the final illustration paper, you can always do something like that in a sketchbook as well. But the paper I'm using for my illustration is uh, Canton Bristol paper because I'm able to apply wet and dry media to the paper while also creating a really great illustration. But as you can see, I'm not using a regular graphite pencil to do the sketching. I'm actually using Prismacolor Call Erase pencils because sometimes it's fun to break away from like your normal sketching pencils, like usual black and white and stuff, and use colored sketching pencils. That's why I have the Prismacolor Call Erase pencils because maybe my final illustration will be colored with that same sketching pencil for example, if I'm using like a blue Prismacolor color race pencil, that tells my future self that the illustration will probably be mostly blue. But if not mostly blue, then a lot of cool colors will be incorporated in the final piece. But choosing the color for your Prismacolor color race pencil, that's totally up to you. You can actually use a red Prismacolor color race pencil and then your final illustration will turn out mo mostly cool colors. You can do that, that's totally up to you. But there is going to be a time where Prismacolor color race pencils are going to be hard to erase. So that's why I stick to whatever colors that I'm using in the final illustration. And now once your sketch is finally complete, you're ready for the next step which is you're actually inking your drawing. You're turning your sketch into finalized line work. And I get it, a lot of artists, including myself, aren't really comfortable with inking their drawing because they're afraid that their like hand when you're drawing it is actually gonna kinda like shake and shake and shake and then you'll end up screwing up your drawing and once you ink it, like you can't go back. So that happens to me sometimes, but a quick way to resolve that issue is to relax and also have confidence in what you're creating because if you're making an illustration just like I am and you're kind of telling a story 
don't be afraid to tell that story. Also, if you're using a paper pad just like I am, you can also turn your paper so that way you get a better dexterity when you're actually drawing it. So that way if you're used to making a line that does this, you can also turn your paper so that it'll actually give you a chance to actually do that same line without having to twist your arm or your body when you're drawing. But what I'm using to ink my drawing is a Japanese brush pen. I don't know the specific brand of it because it's in Japanese, but a micron pen usually just has like one line with that you can use like throughout. Also, I do tend to use these to add some details to either my characters or to whatever background I'm drawing. But the pigment microns are actually better at drawing straight lines than there are brush pens because like I mentioned with like the wiggling on your hand, if you are using a ruler and a brush pen together, you actually end up screwing up the line. So that's why I like to use like a fine point. That's why I like to use a fine liner to actually make straight, straight lines. Also, I like to use a pigment micron with like a smaller line with to add any uh, finer details that I might want to add. And now comes my favorite part of my illustration process, and that's coloring. A lot of artists have different preference towards what they use to color their illustrations. Like you can use watercolors, you can use Adobe Photoshop, but my favorite is using markers. Even though markers are a wet media and they're prone to smudging, they actually dry faster than watercolors. And because of that, it makes it much easier for me to actually color my illustration. Especially if you're using markers that kind of blend into each other nicely. Like if you put down a base layer of marker and then you try to add shade to it, it's going to be easy to blend into each other. And the way I do it gives it a nice look, especially for my illustrations. And I know all of you may be asking, what markers do I use for my illustrations? Well, when it comes to markers, I pretty much use everything. I use Copics, Prismacolors, Ahuhu markers, and any other cheap marker that I can find that can do the job as well. But in my opinion, it's better to use markers instead of watercolors, because unlike watercolors, markers actually dry faster. And second, depending on how you use it, the final color will actually be pale because, because water is clear. And when you're adding water to like a, an actual watercolor cake, it kind of dilutes that color and makes it a little bit pale and that's something I really don't like. But alcohol markers have dye in them that makes them more vibrant when you put it on the paper. But that's pretty much the main reason why I recommend markers. And the only downside to using markers is that one, because they're expensive and two, you have a limited color palette. I mean you could mix marker colors to get new colors but I don't necessarily do that a lot. But you could do that with watercolors because with watercolors you pretty much have an unlimited color palette. Which means you can use any kind of color under the sun and it's easy to mix them. But I'm not into mixing colors like that to get new custom colors. Also I'm better at using markers anyway compared to watercolors. Now depending on how you shade your drawing you can actually leave it just like this with all the shades already in place. Or during the coloring process you could have laid down a flat layer of color and then use some colored pencils to actually do some shading. But there are times where I do use colored pencils to shade even though I already kind of shaded with markers. But the only reason I do that is because but sometimes the marker blending doesn't always look the best. So that's why I use some colored pencils to kind of enhance that shading so it looks like a, a smooth uh, gradient. But I also use colored pencils to actually uh, get some texture in my drawing. Like say if I'm drawing like grass or like the texture of like a brick or like a brick wall or something. I use colored pencils for doing stuff like that. Because compared to the rest of the drawing, the parts I use colored pencils on actually looks as if uh, there were textures on it or if there were like a very old thing, if that makes sense. The brick wall you see in the drawing, I actually use colored pencils on. I did that to show my viewers that there is some texture to the bricks or to show that it's just not like a different material. So I could have left the bricks in the markering phase to make it look like it were something else. Like I can make it look as if it was rubber or you know something that doesn't have a lot of texture to it. But I added the colored pencils to actually show that it's not what you think it would be. But the colored pencils I'm using to add those textures are Prismacolor Premier and the Arteza colored pencils. And now comes the easiest part of my illustration process and that's adding highlights. What I mainly use to add highlights to my drawings is usually a gel pen. And usually when I am adding highlights it's usually towards the eyes because there is light coming towards the eyes. And I want to kind of exemplify that by using my gel pen and going over like a little circle off of the pupil but still in the eyes so people can actually see that there's light coming towards the eyes.
But since the majority of my drawing has kind of colored light on these two characters here, there's there's no need to apply a lot of my gel pen to the characters, really. But notably, in my case, pretty much anything shiny, like the earrings you see on this girl here, and then this metal bar up here, I actually added some highlights there, but I don't know if you can see it, but they're there. But yeah, pretty much anything shiny in my illustration will get highlights somewhere. So here's the final drawing, but there's still one thing missing. So as you can see, I added color light to these characters here, but, but as you can see, nobody knows where the light is coming from. So if we leave the illustration just like this, it won't make sense because no one knows where the light is coming from. Although me, as an artist, I could know where the colored light is coming from, but I want to try to show my viewers where that light is coming from because after adding all these highlights to the drawing, it wouldn't make sense to just leave it like this. But I do have a way to actually solve this problem. So you see this girl has a fist here. And it looks kind of like a necklace that she kind of ripped off for of this other character here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drawing into Procreate, add some super cool effects to it, and then we can actually finalize the drawing. So now that we're in Procreate, I'm going to try to make this effect color the same color I used to make the tonal interest in the drawing. So I'm going to select that specific color and try to make it a little bit more saturated, and then begin adding that effect. I also did the same thing with the white color, reduce the opacity of it and then kind of blended it into that original blue color to make it look like it's bright. And then I added some sparkles around her fist to kind of make it look like that she's holding a magical necklace. But if not a necklace, then something magical and something that emits blue light. Because for one, you're pretty much telling a story with this uh, kind of effect. And second, your viewers will know where the light is coming from. That way the entire drawing with the tonal interest will make sense. And now the drawing is complete. Also, while you're making this light, you can also add some tone to your drawing. Like say, if this were like a dark pyramid, you can actually simulate that same effect in Procreate. Same thing in Photoshop. But honestly, I tend to use Procreate more than I do Photoshop. But you can do any effects in either or. It just depends on your preference. But if you are watching this video and you plan on making an illustration just like mine, let me know in the comments below. And also tag me on Instagram so I can see what you came up with. And just a reminder, every video that I was gonna reference in my my video will be in the description down below and also link to the card some point throughout the video but that's gonna do it for my video if you liked it give it a like and a comment if you're new to my channel I do lots of drawing tutorials speed drawings art challenges and more so if you haven't already subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload and I'll see you in my next video I